Good morning guys, good morning internet, good morning YouTube. I hope you guys are doing great. I'm EJ, back once again with another narrated time-lapse art video. Uh, this time we're doing 3D. So we're back taking a look at some of my work done in Blender. Uh, so real quick, let me talk to you guys about my inspiration for this piece. This piece is inspired by Mr. Prashi, uh, Doc Tross. Um, I'll put a link in my description down below. Uh, he's an artist friend of mine. Uh, we met through um, SketchZone.net. I'm not sure if I ran into him in conceptart.org, but I know that I've been interacting with him a whole lot at sketchzone.net and this is uh one of his artwork the artwork that we're taking a look at right now on the top right the japanese lady in the kimono that looks like a robot uh this is his stunning artwork his very stunning artwork and when i saw it i really liked it and i was like you know what i think i want to do this in 3d so i decided to make it a project uh to try and recreate this in 3D uh, and see where I, I could go with it. So, um, so yeah, that's my inspiration. It is Mr. Prashi, Mr. Doctoros. Thank you so much for your wonderful artwork. Um, and thank you for letting me do this 3D piece. So, um, so if you guys have gotten the chance to see the video, uh, H.M. Strauss Oranges, um, in that video, I talked a lot about likeness and how I was feeling on the likeness aspect. Um, well, real quick, I guess just to recap what happened. Agents Draws is another guy I know from uh, SketchShown.net. And he also has an artwork that I decided to recreate in 3D. And I put up a video of it, the making of it, and I put a narrated uh, component to it. It's on my YouTube. Go take a look uh, if you guys would like to. Um, but in that video, I talked a lot about how I failed in accomplishing the likeness of Agent's work. And uh, towards the end, I just started going for completion, essentially. And, you know, just to complete the work and just to have it finished, just to have it done, just to have something, you know. Now, I tried my best with this particular piece. I went ahead and tried my best to do the whole likeness thing because um, I knew I was having issues with it, essentially. Um, and I failed again. <laughs> I guess it's just the best way for me to put it. Uh, I didn't do a good job with the likeness in this particular piece. Uh, I tried three times and that's uh, what you'll see in the first 10 minutes. First 10 minutes is going to show my first two attempts at trying to do this piece um so the first one um uh, trying to take a look at the video right now to see if okay so yeah this is the second attempt this is the polygonal attempt um the first attempt was just straight up sculpt i started with a ball and kind of just shaped things out and uh, I tried to go with it, or I tried to run with it. And when I was working on it, I ran into problems with the eyes. I don't know what it is about the eyes, but sculpting the eyes is probably the hardest part for me when I'm sculpting 3D faces. I just, I can't seem to get it right. Uh, I can't seem to get the curvature right. I can't seem to get how big it is, how what the size of it is. Um, so I have issues with it. And so when I was uh, sculpting the first time around, I started running into problems with the eyes. And I kind of took a step back and took a look at the whole face in general and realized, you know what, this is not looking Asian at all. <laughs> so I already know that I was failing on the likeness aspect of it. Um, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to do a more polygonal approach, polygonal, straight up polygonal uh, modeling. So this is my second attempt, essentially, at trying to do this. And this attempt also failed, <laughs> mainly because I I got impatient. I feel like sculpting is so much faster when you're con concepting uh, or when you're trying to just start out 
um, for sure, without a doubt, sculpting is way quicker. And polygonal modeling was kind of slow and tedious. Not only that, but I didn't really have a character sheet to go with. I only have one drawing to base my 3D object on. And so, you know, for this polyg polygonal approach, uh, for this polygonal modeling approach, it also failed because of those two things. It was taking too long, um, which I could have really just been patient and just kept going with it. But really the more important as uh, part of it is the fact that I didn't have a character sheet. I didn't have something to base my polygonal, my polygons on, and I was just kind of just winging everything. And so it failed. And so what I ended up doing after this second approach is I went back to the first approach and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try and see if I could run with it. And in the end, I also gave up. I was like, no, second approach is just not working. And so I went for my third approach. And on the third approach, I decided to actually look at an actual Asian person, um, which, you know, I'll talk about that in a few minutes uh, after all this video is over. But yeah, in the next five four, or four, three, four minutes, I'm going to try and attempt this whole polygonal approach and you'll just see me give up. And then I'll try to bring up the first sculpt and it still didn't work. And then after that, I'm going to start on my third attempt, which I will talk to you and talk about in a second. So this is me going back to the first sculpt. Um, you see that I gave up on the polygonal modeling and I decided to do a totally different approach with the first sculpt, which was to sculpt the eyes separately from the face in itself, instead of always trying to sculpt the eyes out of the face, which is what I normally do. Um, so that was what happened a few seconds ago. And then you could tell that that wasn't working for me either. So I just went back to my old habit of trying to sculpt the eyes out of the face. And again, it just still wasn't working for me, you know? Um, so yeah, you will see me give up on this and start a new one, uh, which you will see in a few seconds. In hindsight, though, uh, the eyes are kind of well sculpted. I mean, it's kind of working at this point in time. I mean, just looking at it, but the girl wasn't very pretty, <laughs> which I could talk about that some more later on. Um, but yeah, let's talk about this. This is basically my third attempt. And on this one, what I'm trying to do is I started with an object that could kind of give me an idea of the shape of the head because I know that it was going to be separate from the face. So that's what that was. And now I started in the face. 
And this time around, I looked up a photo of Michelle Yeoh, the actress. Um, she's a famous time. I, I thought at first that she was Chinese, but it turns out she's Taiwanese. I could be wrong. I'm not sure, but I know that she's a popular Asian actress. And I decided to pull up a photo of hers because I feel that her face is kind of the most similar to that Japanese girl. Even though Michelle Yeoh isn't technically Japanese, she kind of has the same similar features as that of Prashi's artwork. And that's why I chose her. But I blurred it out. I blurred out her photo just because... I'm not sure about the rights of the photo, so, you know, just for safety's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and just blur it out, and that's why it's blurred out. Um, so, yeah, this is um, Michelle Yeoh, and you can see that it's going by so much quicker for me, and I think that's part of the reason why my Agent Draws um, sculpt wasn't working too well, and the first two attempts that I did on this artwork on sculpting this artwork didn't go too well i think the reason why they failed mainly is because i really actually wasn't referencing an actual human um when i started looking at michelle ceo's face it really helped me figure out you know how the eye should be in a way you know so it helped a lot to have this reference and this is the reason why it stress references a lot in looking at things and looking at photos because you know, I, you can sit there and just keep hammering things out up until you get it. But what ends up happening is that you just end up wasting a lot of time and you still could not get it accurate. In this case, I got the eyes accurate enough to where, you know, I got the curvature of it right and the shape of it right. Um, and so, yeah, it worked for me on this particular sculpt because I was actually looking at a human person. Um, instead of just trying to go with, you know, my gut instinct, essentially. Uh, so in a way, this kind of presents a problem for me when it comes to cartoon characters. Um, I, I guess I'm going to have to practice some more on cartoon characters. But when it comes to sculpting humans, uh, it for me, I personally feel that it's best to look at an actual photo of a person because it helps a lot. Um, so yeah. And you can still see that even though I have that photo now to kind of guide me, I'm still struggling um, quite a lot. Now I'm about to finish sculpting the face. Um, and you will see that as soon as this face is done, you're going to think the same exact thing I think of, which is this girl does not look like Michelle Yeoh. <laughs> so again, I feel the likeness, you know, and... At this point, I had to make a decision on whether or not I should I push for likeness or should I just be happy that I actually got a functional female face out of this goal. Because that was one of the things that I hated about the first goal and a very important thing that I want to talk about also. Um, females, uh, well, somebody mentioned this in sketchzone.net and i believe it was milk but i could be wrong that is her nickname uh, she goes by milk but she mentioned about how difficult it is to draw a female face um when you try to attempt to draw a female face one little wrong thing that you do would autom automatically make her either look super super ugly or b it will make her look like a dude <laughs> Which is the problem I've been having with my sculpt. And the problem I was running into in that first sculpt that I have. In that first sculpt that I have, um, when I try to sculpt this Japanese lady, in that first sculpt, that sculpt was beginning to look like a guy. Which is part of the reason why I ditched that sculpt. Because I was like, you know, this is looking like a dude. It's, it's just ugly i have to get rid of it and on the polygonal one you know i kind of have the shape of the girl um female's face tends to be narrower than guys shapes you know and on that polygonal model you know it was kind of 
looking like a female, like shape-wise. But it was ugly. <laughs> it was just straight up ugly. And so what happened on this third one was that even though it did not look like Michelle Yeoh and you know quite frankly it doesn't even really look Asian at first I thought it kind of look Asian you know I, I was looking at it and I'm like yeah this kind of look Asian but now that I've looked at it some more I realized that she's kind of like a hybrid <laughs> kind of half Asian half American or something but anyways going back to what I was going to say about this piece and the reason why I decided not to go for likeness was because I was just happy with the fact that she finally looked female you know whether or not she's pretty I think that what I sculpted is very gorgeous what what I sculpted is a very pretty girl she looks very cute it's up to you if you guys think that she is you know if you guys don't then that's fine but for me personally I'm just happy about the fact that she looks like female <laughs> compared to all those other ones that I attempted that did not just look female and so this is probably the reason why I just decided to just skip the likeness once again which is kind of what I what happened to me when I did Age of Draws um, school um, I just went ahead and just let the likeness go and just go for a finished piece you know because if I didn't then I was just gonna get stuck never ever finishing this so I just went ahead and just you know tried and finished this but um yeah I really wanted to mention the whole likeness issue because it, it got raised after I was close to finishing this and I started posting um WIPs and progress images on it on sketchzone.net and that was one of the things that got mentioned was you know it wasn't looking Asian anymore it didn't really look like Prashi's uh, uh, artwork, you know. And I kind of just wanted to explain the reason why, you know. <laughs> it's because I'm just happy with the fact that I got it to look like a girl. You know, better that than a dude looking skull, you know. So, yeah. But now that I've mentioned it... Um, I guess I could talk some more about the process and about the things that have happened in the past few minutes that I didn't really get to explain because uh, I was knee deep, knee deep in explaining the whole likeness issue that I kept running into. But what has transpired in the past few minutes is... Uh, I, after I sculpted the face, um, I knew that a lot of pieces were going to be different. I mean, not different, but separate. So uh, I made the ears separate from the face. Uh, you know, there was a huge debate in my part on whether I should attach the ears or whether I should leave it uh, completely separate. But judging from my reference image of Prashi's artwork, um, it clearly is separate. So I just went ahead and decided to separate the ears. Now, as for the face, I knew that I had to cut it out in a certain way so that the hair could come out of it. And there was a debate in my head on that part on whether I should follow Prashi's uh, face, the way it's cut, or if I should follow Michelle Yeoh's photo um, and follow the natural hairline. So... In the end, I went with Michelle Yeoh's hairline. And that's the reason why if you look at the face, it is slightly different from the way the sh face is shaped at in Prashi's artwork. Because I decided to uh, base my Boolean cuts on Michelle Yeoh's hairline. Um, so after I did all those Boolean cuts, um, I cut the face to kind of shape it into the hairline and then I also cut um, the bottom part of the face so that the neck could come through and after I was done with that now I'm at the stage where I started detailing or started putting the actual details on the face um, which you just saw me do uh, what I did is basically I just took um, blenders crease brush I think is what it's called it's a brush that does outlines essentially I took that brush 
made my outlines on the face and then I took a bunch of boxes and made these rectangular cuts that is on the drawing on Prashi's drawing or Doc Draw's drawing and so I did boolean cuts on it um, and now I'm going over these boolean cuts and kind of um, adding bevels by just going over it with the crease or pinch brush and in all honesty I feel like there's a better way for me to bevel this uh, than what I just did but you know I just went ahead and just did that and so yeah now I just got done detailing what I should have done was instead of detailing I should have posted this progress photo on sketchzone.net and got input on whether or not it looked Asian enough or how close it was to Prashi's artwork and that's where I failed like I should have asked for advice uh, before proceeding to detail but I think I just got so much into it that I just went ahead and did it without thinking about it you know like I, I didn't realize or I didn't think about having I didn't think about stopping and asking up until later is what I'm trying to get at um, so yeah, what I should have done was instead of detailing and putting in all those details, I should have asked for opinion so I could have made adjustments before adding those details. Because what ended up happening was that as soon as I put in those details, it becomes immensely more difficult for me to do my edits. And so when I posted this and I got the comment that it didn't look Asian anymore, I, you know, just kind of politely explained them. You know, I attempted three times. I just letting it the likeness go you know um so yeah but yeah um looking back at it i should have asked for advice before adding those details because it would have made things so much more difficult if to edit and that's part of the reason why i didn't do my edits because i already put in the details Anyway, so what's going on in the video right now is me blocking out the kimono. And I also ran into issues with the kimono. Not as much as all the other issues that I was running into. For the kimono, my biggest issue was the symmetry. Uh, it is such a godsend to have the symmetry option when you're sculpting. Because it really saves quite a lot of time. Um, so when I'm sculpting, obviously you can tell that everything's symmetrical. What I'm doing on one side is gets reflected on the other side. Um, so it is an immensely time-saving feature in a lot of sculpting software, you know, cuts your work in half is what it does. The thing though is that the kimono is not symmetrical. Um, if you see um, the folds, like in the chest area, uh, one piece of fabric folds over the other one. Uh, I'm not sure what the correct uh, clothing term is for, for that. I want to say the color. That's not exactly color like the way you have in the dress shirt. It's, I guess, just a fold. I'll just call it a fold. But you can see that one overlaps the other. And that's not symmetrical at all. So... You know, I kind of had issue on thinking on how far should my sculpt go before I break symmetry. And this is always a question that I have in, in my head, you know, especially when I'm dealing with symmetry or details. Same thing with the detailing in the face. You know, how far should I sculpt the general features before I start detailing? Or how far should I sculpt with symmetry on before I break symmetry? You know, so there's always like a debate in my head. Um, and it was kind of slowing me down because I wasn't sure, you know, like you could tell right now that I started working on the color sort of area that I was referring to that I'm not really sure what it is, what it's called. Um, but you can tell that I'm still trying to do it symmetrically, you know, to save myself time. Um. And again, like I said, I didn't know like when to switch over. Um, but at some point, I just decided to just go ahead and just go for it. And I think this is when I decided to break symmetry. 
So yeah, at this point, I know that I can't go back. Well, I mean, I technically could have gone back to the rest of the sculpt and have turned the symmetry back on and it would have been fine. It, I, I just, if I was to do that, I, I would just need to make sure that I don't go over the parts that are not symmetrical. But in the end, it all worked out. So, so yeah. But yeah, uh, at this point in time, everything is like all coming together um, sculpt wise. You know, I'm happy with the face. It does not look like Prashi's face, but at least it looks female. Whether or not it looks Asian, uh, you know, it's up to you guys. Um, I tried my best to make it look Asian, but, you know, it kind of failed. And I'm okay with that because I'm not going for perfection at this point. Um, so. Now I decided that it was time to do the pedestal because it was getting to that point where where things are kind of just coming along together in terms of the body and the face and everything else. Now I know that the most difficult thing to sculpt was going to be the hair. And I don't know why it is that I always have such a hard problem with the hair, but I almost always do. Um, so I saved it for last. So that's why I decided to go ahead and model the column and everything else just so that I could get ready for the hair. As you can see, I have begun modeling the hair. Um, I knew that I needed to separate certain parts of the hair, like the top part. I knew I needed that to be separate to the main body of the hair, as well as the hair bun, which is what you see me work on right now. So they're all in three separate pieces. I was going to all sculpt them differently and combine them, essentially. Now, um, I set it up in Blender 2.8 and as soon as I set it up, I open up this version of Blender 2.81 that I have, which has new features for the sculpting and I, I've been watching videos of it and I, I was excited with some of the features that's coming out. So I just have to try it out. And so this is me working on Blender 2.81 Alpha or pre-alpha. I think at this point I was still at pre-alpha. And the feature that I was really dying to try out was the remesh function, which is pretty much like ZBrush's Dynamesh function. Um, so yeah, I was excited about that because I saw someone sculpt something. Um, using the remesh function and I was really impressed with the video that I was watching that I just had to try it out and so here I am uh, working on 2.81 um, trying out this new feature it's very cool it's very amazing it the one thing that I like about the remesh function is that it really helps me block certain things out um, in low format um, Although in hindsight, I could use the multi-resolution to help me do that. But the good thing about remesh uh, versus multi-resolution is that it takes into account all the details that you add in and adds polygons based on the stuff that you add in. So that's always a good thing. Um, now, the differences between remesh and dynamic topology or dintopo they're about the same workflow wise um 
the problem that I keep running into Din Topo is that I have a tendency to jump into super fine details with Din Topo real quick. And even though there's really nothing wrong with doing that, what ends up happening is that I end, I end up with a far denser um, object than I did with, with this one, uh, with the remesh function. Um, so that's, you know, a nice little advantage of remesh, I guess. Although towards the end, my the remesh did end up getting heavy because I started putting like a really a lot of details. Um, wait, I took it back. I think I might have used dynamic topology towards the end. I think that's why the polygon count just went up. Um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to take a look into it later um, when it arrives uh, later in the video. But yeah, I'm excited about the remesh function. It's a totally different option of working versus dynamic topology. Um, whether or not this is going to be more advantageous than a dynamic topology, I really don't know. Um, I had experience with Dynamesh, you know, and I like Dynamesh. But when I ran into um, dynamic topology or Din Topo, that was part of the reason why I went back to Blender for sculpting was because they had that feature. I like the fact that I didn't have to press a button, you know, for to remesh everything because that's what you kind of had to do with Dynamesh. And that's also what you kind of have to do with remesh is that you kind of have to press this button uh, in order for it to recalculate everything. With dynamic topology, you know, you don't have to. You could just keep sculpting and you don't have to worry about pressing a button for, you know, for the object to update. Um, but again, the only disadvantage to that is that you end up with a much more denser object. So there's pros and cons uh, between the two different ways of sculpting. Um, I at first I didn't like Dynamesh. I was all about I was all about dynamic topology, and then now that I tried Remesh, it totally made me miss Dynamesh and ZBrush. I'm like, you know what? Dynamesh wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Because it did help keep the vertex, the vertex or the face count, the polygonal face count low. So, you know, there's pros and cons. So, but yeah, this was a feature that I really just wanted to try out and, and see what it was like because it reminded me so much of Dynamesh. Um, but yeah, um, so going back to what I'm doing and I guess explaining what's been going on. Um, good advice for people who are sculpting and for people who are drawing too. Always start out with basic shapes. Always have it looser and much, much um, not fine details. Like don't jump into detailing real quick or else you'll end up getting stuck into uh, uh very long detailing process so always start out loose and big and blocking and that's what i did with the remesh is that i you know blocked out where the certain hair flow was going to be um that's what i did at the very beginning um that's why the hair kind of looked pixelated and now on the second process i went back and actually defined where the hair strands are going to be now how I'm doing this sculpt is actually kind of, um, should I say, a no-no. Like I wouldn't suggest for anyone to go as deep and as detailed as I did, where I actually worked on each and every single strand. If you watch other artists when they sculpt hair, they really, really do it loose. They don't go as many details compared to how I did it with this one. Now, the only reason why I went and detailed every single strand as much as I can was because in the photo, in Prachi's photo, those strands are chords. And those chords actually have details. You know, like chord details. And I wanted to keep that as part of the sculpt. So, 
I had a choice to make in a way. I could have just kept it hair, the hair just as a natural hair and not as cords, or I could have stayed, or I, or I could have stayed um, faithful to the painting and sculpted it as cords. And I decided that I was going to do the latter, which involved a lot of work. <laughs> like, no joking, no kidding. The rest of the video is just going to be me sculpting out the details on this hair. Um, so yeah, I took a lot of time with this one. Um, and the effect is subtle too. Like I, the details in the hair isn't as much obvious, it feels like. Especially in the final render that I have shown at the very beginning of this video. Um, you can see that the hair details doesn't quite stand out as much as you would think it would. But it's there, you know, and and I wanted to keep that as part of the sculpt because that's one of the integral parts of the illustration of Prashi's illustration is that this girl, this Japanese girl has cords for hair, you know, and so I wanted to stay faithful to that. And so uh, I went and took the I took the extra time to basically sculpt it all out painfully but fun too you know because when I started working on it it it's just a simple outlining of things it was just very tedious but fun too because you know like I said not a whole lot of thinking is involved it's just it's very sad so yeah Now I'm working on the ponytail and this this was actually a fun part to sculpt because I had to figure out how to do that ponytail. And uh, how I ended up doing it is I basically did this poly polygon object which you see it on the lower right, this cylinder that has kind of a square hole into it. And what I did was I took this... Uh, this object and applied an array modifier and a curve modifier so that I can have it um, end up in the shape of the ponytail. You can see me working on it right now where I'm adding, well right now I'm editing the curve and um, I think I deleted this curve that I have right now and replaced it with something else because I wasn't liking what I wasn't liking the results I was getting with this particular curve, but uh, yeah, I think this is the new one now. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm setting up my piece to line up properly. And there's a lot of setup involved in it, and it involves like make sure that the um, Objects rotation is centered in an object and not in world space and all this stuff. Like there's just, it, it's very involved to set it up. Um, but the basic idea is to use the array modifier and the curve modifier. And you'll end up with this cool looking ponytail, which I ended up having um, in my skull. Now I wish I had added more curved to it you know I mean like looking at it now it doesn't look as curved as the illustration but I'm just glad that I was able to pull it off because it was probably like one of the hardest thing to think of how to do in this piece so yeah And now I'm working on the sun, which is a fairly easy piece to do. Uh, I just took the cylinder and kind of cut out some parts to it and then rebuilt it back up. And I ended up with this circle, striped circle, and I put it behind her.
and then as soon as all this is set uh, i knew that all that is left to do is to do the core details on the hair um, which again as i've mentioned is going to take probably the longest part of the whole sculpt so yeah and i already mentioned it this is like the zen part of the whole thing where i don't have to think as much you know there's not a whole lot of thought involved it's just continuous repetitive movement um it gets boring it gets tedious but it's also zen you know when you hit that sweet sweet spot of not thinking too much and you know still enjoying what you're doing it, it gets really really cool you know because you you could just sit there listen to music and just zone out and just go with the flow essentially so yeah um in in a painting i that stage for me is the detailing phase when i have troubleshoot all the lighting issues and all the compositional issues and all the color issues once i have troubleshooted all that part and i'm in the part where i'm detailing that's like the zen part for me in the sculpt part it's like the same thing when once i'm ready to add the details the fine details that that becomes the fun part so yeah um, in this particular case, since the hair is immensely detailed, um, I knew it was going to take a while, uh, a long, long time. Initially, I thought it was going to be two hours, but after sculpting it for like the first few minutes, I realized it was going to be like a four-hour endeavor, which was fine with me because, you know, again, like I said, at this point, it was, there wasn't going to be a whole lot of thinking involved anymore. It's just me just sculpting it out. So yeah. The fun part begins for me right about now.
So this piece is almost close to being finished. Um, again, like I said, uh, what's going on in the scene right now is pretty much rinse repeat, you know, where I'm adding the details of the chords, uh, adding some grooves here and there and sharpening some things up. Um, so it's pretty much rinse and repeat. Um, this was a very fun sculpt for me to do. I, I actually really, really liked it. Um, of course, I had likeness issues again, like I did with Ajim's uh, artwork. But it's okay. Um, this is going to be a struggle of mine within the next few months, years, I suspect. Um, when it comes to doing portraits in acrylic and 2D painting, you know, I kind of had portraits down for the most part. You know, I, I could make someone look like who they are. Uh, if I'm looking at a photo or whatnot, and especially in 2D, uh, not a happy, uh, it doesn't happen all the time. You know, I do have failures and even professionals and masters can sometimes have failures in the likeness. Um, I've seen it happen. I've actually seen YouTube videos of people who are looked up as masters and they themselves will admit, sorry, I did not capture the likeness in this one. I just wanted to just go ahead and finish the piece. Yeah, da, 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 da. I've actually seen them do that. So it happens even to the best of us where they couldn't capture the likeness. Um, but for 2D, you know, I'm fairly good at it. I'm fairly adept at it. You know, I fail, you know, just like everyone else. But I don't fail nowhere near enough as I do when it comes to 3D. So this is something that I am looking forward to working on in the next few months or so to where I could just capture a likeness. Um, it's going to be an even bigger challenge for me, especially um, doing the cartoon ones. Ajim's artwork is very Disney-ish, very cartoony, and I have such a hard time trying to capture some of his characters. So, you know, I might go back and look at some of his artwork and, you know, sculpt some again. Or look at other artists that are very much Disney in nature. You know, just to kind of practice and help keep my skill level up. Um, and I, I'll also practice on regular humans because, you know, uh, I feel like that that would help me also in my artwork. So, yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to is sculpting more faces, sculpting more and more faces and practicing more on them. Thank you so much guys for watching it with me. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Good night.